Lately I can't sleep Lately I've been drinking One box so cheap I'll detox next week Hey guys, welcome back to the 5 W's interview show. My name is Reese Setter and today we have another very special guest who I am super excited to talk to. This guy popped on my radar a couple days ago, not even a week ago. I'm still super fresh to this guy and you are also going to be want to be hip to what this guy is doing. We are interviewing Sam the Seagull, artist out of Vancouver, Canada. Same as me. I saw this guy pop up on by winning a local files, like a local music competition. I was so interested in what he was putting out. Uh, that it went, I searched and I found like his music. I started listening to it and I was like, wow, this guy is actually really cool. And then I dug deeper and deeper and I just found there was so much rich kind of, he just puts so much into whatever he does that I just had to have him sit down and break it, break all of it down. So without further ado, I give you Sam the Seagull, a vocalist, a storyteller, an actor, a director, a funny guy, and a guy that jumps off really high things into water. So <laughs> Sam, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm doing super duper swell. Thanks, man, and thanks for having me on this. It's awesome. No, my pleasure, my pleasure. It's been it's been a hot minute since I've been able to do one of these. I've kind of been distracted, focusing on other stuff. So I'm just excited to get back into and talk about just talk about some art and uh, about like cool people that make cool shit, man. Totally, bro. Cool. Is there anything you want to kind of like get out of the way, tell everyone that's here, give some context before we jump into our first question? I think you kind of summed it up pretty well, and I'm I'm glad you uh, researched and found out that I was a diver and an actor too. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we dig deep. We dig deep. No stone left unturned. Well, a lot <laughs> of stones, but you know, we do what we can in the short time. So we're just gonna jump yeah. into our first question of the five W's, which is our who. So uh, this one's gonna talk about the story of the Troitus music video, which was the video that actually put you, me onto you. So it's a good place to start. And good place for everyone else to start so watch that video but i've watched this video quite a few times i have broken it down in my head i've gone through trying to like break down all the poetic devices that you try and use and all the symbolism and stuff and I, I think it's a really interesting music video which is why i've like tried to process it so much but there's one thing that i can't really put my finger on and i'm hoping uh if it doesn't break the ambiance of the whole thing you could potentially give me an answer so who is the masked figure in the story of Detritus. Like the tortoise? Is that the tortoise? The the one with like the big cloak with like the mask. Yeah, that that's the tortoise in it. Um and I guess I'll spoil it a little bit, but I think in my mind that was almost like a metaphor for like God or something. Mm -hmm. Just like this uh this figure where you're at like your wits end and it's just someone telling you that like you can keep on going when everyone else around you is failing you and then this like omnius presence mm -hmm. kind of helps guide you okay yeah is does the tortoise does naming it the tortoise mean anything exactly or does that have any meaning to you well mm, i think kind of like Symbolically, like, tortoises can grow to, like, pretty old ages. Mm -hmm. So, like, with, like, age comes wisdom. Yeah. And so I was, like, wanting, like, a really wise figure. Um, but then, to be totally honest, I, I just kind of started writing it. And um, I usually find myself talking about girls. Yeah. Like, and I was starting off with florists. Like, she was a florist or something, and I was like, no, 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 like, <laughs> I'm not going to go into girls anymore. I'm like, come on, switch it up. I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I was like, tortoise, perfect. And then from that, I started off with the hook of, like, falling asleep in the forest and seeing the tortoise. Yeah. And then that's kind of when all the other uh, animals and figures came into play, talking about the wolves and the bees. And stuff. Nice, because uh, if I'm... This song gives me like really kind of like MGMT vibes, kind of like coming of age story. I don't, I don't know if you've seen the movie Kings of Summer, but this reminded me as if I was watching and listening to the soundtrack of that movie, uh, which is about like a bunch of boys getting lost in a forest and just setting up shop and living there. And I just felt like it really fit in that kind of vibe. Uh, and there was also one more thing. So 
you, I guess, are detritus because you reference, you portray yourself in the music video as detritus, and then I believe in another song you reference you that you are not Tobias, you are detritus. Uh, is there anything yeah. that you have to kind of like comment on between that? Uh, is like your portrayal of that character? Yeah. So, um, if you notice at the very beginning of the music video. Mm -hmm. He's actually called No Name. So, like, when the bullies come up to him and, like, punch him in the face, they're like, fucking No Name. Mm -hmm. And then it also mentions it in the verse, too, where his, like, father was, like, kind of kicking him to the curb and saying that No Name is the only name he deserves. Yeah. Um, and so, I guess, with the, the idea of the story of Detritus is almost kind of like a Greek myth in a sense mm -hmm. like i wanted to make my own uh greek myth you know how it's like i don't know this story is about like how mosquitoes are like the devil or something like that yeah uh sorry this is kind of confusing but basically um i my idea was like creating the story of detritus and what detritus is it's kind of like dead organic material found in the forest floor that like helps all the trees grow and like the bugs live mm -hmm. and whatnot. And so I want it to be like this uh, transformation story of this kid who's been like bullied and abused by his father. Um, he doesn't have a mother too. And it's kind of implied, but I also wrote another book about that. Um, and he's never given a name and he like essentially overdoses and dies. And the tortoise is, uh, finally giving him a name and, and he goes through like kind of like death and rebirth in a yeah. sense and um so i i kind of wanted it to be like that like this kid dissolving into the earth and that's what detritus is so yeah that's i don't know if that made sense but no that really <laughs> makes a lot of sense i mean it how it kind of like wraps itself back in it all the poetic devices kind of all come culminate into Kind of like being together because i i originally thought when i heard the name that it was like a greek name or some sort of greek god or something so i was like i was like detritus this sounds like some greek name so i googled it like greek gods trying to like figure it out but it, it actually isn't it just sounds like super similar and it was actually it was just like decaying matter in a forest which yeah was super sick yeah, so, I mean, enough fanboying about that music video. Amazing job on that. I'm just going to give you one compliment before we move on, because I've, I've watched it so many times. I watched it with my mom, too. She loves it. Uh, yeah, Every, <laughs> everyone everyone thinks it's great so far. But we're just going to jump into our second question of the five Ws, which is our what. So this one's a little bit more fun, a little bit more chillax. And uh, since we know you were a divey boy, uh, we just want to know, what has been your favorite thing to jump off? Probably diving board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been cliff jumping a lot. Oh, you know what I did recently, though? What? Is I jumped out of a plane. I went skydiving. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was super random, or, like, pretty random. My friend at the beginning of the week was like, hey, do you want to go, like, cliff uh, or skydiving? And I just had, like, a, a therapy session, so it was kind of, like, all in my stuff, and I was like, I don't know, man, like, I don't know if I want to go cliff jumping, but I was like, you know what, I, 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 it's kind of, but I was like, you know what, I will take you, I'll take you there, so I drove him out to Abbotsford, and as we're driving there, I'm like, you know what, man, maybe I will go, and so we called them up, and they had one more spot ready to go, and so it's just kind of like, Damn. in the moment, <laughs> paid for it, and went skydiving, and that was really fun, and kind of just how I, I envisioned it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that like the culmination of your diving and cliff jumping career, jumping out of a plane, like the biggest dive? Yeah, the biggest dive for sure. And surprisingly peaceful. Mm -hmm. Like you do the first, the first leap is definitely scary, but when you're falling through the air, it's almost like serenity. Yeah. I guess so you're, you're pretty comfortable because you, going through your Instagram and through like all your kind of content you have, you are shown jumping off things quite commonly like in the yeah. video for 007 you jump off a diving board uh that looks super high 
Um, yeah. On the cover of Green Tea, I believe you're doing a backflip on a trampoline. On the cover of I Pool am. House, you're jumping off your roof into your pool. So you yeah. spend a, Sam the Seagull spends a lot of time in the air above water, it seems. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, so when did you kind of first get into, like, jumping off really high things into water? Uh, I started gymnastics when I was nine years old. Mm. And then about, like, a year or two later, I got into diving. And um, I think I remember one funny story was, like, we were driving by the bank for, or biking by the bank for aquatic center, me and my family. Yeah. And we saw the 10 meter. And I was really young. I was like 10 years old. But I was like, I'm going to jump off that one day. <laughs> and my sister was like, no, you're not, Sam. That's way too big. I was like, yeah, I am, Becky. And then like cut forward like another year or two. And I was training downtown. And then uh, it kind of came to the point where I was doing diving and gymnastics competitively. And it was like, which sport I'm going to choose. So mm -hmm. I went with diving in high school. And that's been like a super long, it was a super long sports career. Like went to nationals and Canada summer games, been to like training camps in Cuba and China. Damn. So it's been a big, big sport for me. But I, I love it. And I get to teach it now as well. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Because I was like... <laughs> It was funny kind of looking and seeing like how all the things cross over, kind of like doing the research. It was like, oh, he's a diver, but divers like the ocean. He likes the ocean, but he's called the seagull, so he flies. But then he's jumping here and he's jumping there. And I was just like, <laughs> just seeing how everything all connected was it was super fun to kind of just do that little research. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. So we're just going to fly into our third question of the five W's, which is our when. And it seems like you have spent quite a bit of time throughout your life making music. You've done quite a lot of things, many different projects, a lot on SoundCloud, some on Spotify. If you want to listen to his other shit, go back to SoundCloud. There's tons of stuff going back way far. So when was your favorite memory making music? Hmm, that's such a good question. Um, maybe I'll give you my, one of like my first memories yeah. and how I kind of started getting into it was I met this kid named Matias, um, at the skate park. He was like a Brazilian dude. Yeah. And then one day I was downtown biking and I was trying to find the library because I haven't been to it yet. I'm at the crosswalk and I see Matias. I'm like, yo dude, I saw you at the skate park. I'm like, what's up? He's like, oh, man, just hanging out, going to record music. I'm like, you're going to a recording studio right now? Because, like, I've never, like, I've always heard about going to recording studios, but I've never been to one. Yeah. And I love rapping, and that's what I wanted to do. He's like, yeah, man, like, just at the library. I was like, the library has recording studios? Are you in <laughs> what? He's like, yeah, man, like, come with me. And then we ended up going and just recording some music that day. And it was Absolutely trash. We had no clue what we were doing. <laughs> but that was like the the beginning of like actually recording music and starting to put it out. Um, and so I give a lot of like, I don't know, thank, thanks to the Vancouver Library for having their inspiration lab. Um, and that's also why I use Reaper as my DAW because that's the only DAW they had at the library. And, like, I know most people kind of use, like, Logic, Napleton, Pro Tools. Yeah. And I was like, I just got to figure out how to use Reaper because it's the only one I have access to right now. So, let's go. Damn, what a coincidence that you were both heading to the library, but for completely different reasons. How old were you for that? I was just out of high school, so I think I was 17, like, just about to turn 18. Mm -hmm. nice. Yes. Damn, that, that's pretty cool. Because... Yeah. But then I was, I was looking at it, and it seems like uh, for the Pool House EP, uh, just kind of breaking that down a little bit, you made that in 36 hours? Yeah, dude, that was so sick. Basically, I was like, because we had all this time during lockdown, and I was trying to make music. And I was making yeah. all these songs and kind of like half-ass editing them, but I wasn't getting anything out. I hadn't get, gotten anything out for a long time. So I was like, ugh. Oh you know what, I'm just going to make like a really, really short song, like 30 seconds, 
I'm going to record it, mix the shit out of it, and just post it. And I'm not going to go to sleep until I post it. And then, so I made that song, and then I p- picked up another beat. I was like, oh, maybe I'll make another song. Yeah. And so I made the second one. Um, and then in the, like, later on, around, like, 5 or, you know, probably like 8 a.m., I just came upon another beat. And then uh, I made, like, three songs that night. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to make an EP. Um, <laughs> with it, I didn't get any sleep during the day because I had to help my parents paint the fence. Yeah. So I just recorded music all night, then painted the fence, and then around like the afternoon, I just like did all the final mixing and mastering and stuff. And then I did that cover art too, where I jumped off the pool uh, or the pool house into the pool, and then uploaded it. But I'd say that's like one of my favorite ways to make music mm-hmm. is like to force. It's so simple. It's like you can't go to sleep until it's done and then it's like you're gonna get it done eventually you know yeah it, it kind of leaves you without much choice you kind of the motivation gets there it's like i really want to go to bed because everyone really <laughs> wants to sleep yeah totally and so i'd say for like any artist that's just like wanting to make music just that's a that's a great way to do it and i also find too most of my songs just happen from going like shit, I, I, I need to make a song. Like, I want to make a song. I haven't wrote something. And I just, like, usually pick the first beat and start singing the first thing, and I'll just start writing down. Yeah. Not, like, too much overthinking. It works out to be pretty good. Yeah, I think that kind of fits into, like, the style that you got going for your music because it feels very personal and very casual and very kind of, like, relatable. It's not overproduced. It's kind of just focusing on being good and like really good but not like polished and pristine but really letting your character and all kind of like the flaws and everything kind of like shine through that I think that kind of like makes it even better kind of like how not to say low production but kind of like improvise and in the moment you do your things like even your music videos uh like I think believe for like shoelaces it's just like a one take and like a is that the one in like the parking lot yeah, it was by uh, this old high school I didn't go to, but it was right by my house. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it seems like it that thematically kind of like ties in through all kind of like things that you do, and I think I think it gives everything you do a really kind of unique, special character, which I think is it's it's very fun to kind of like research and go down into. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, and that was same with Wine in a Box, which was kind of like uh, another music video, and I just did it like by my TV, just projecting up little images on the screen. Oh, that, was a, that it, wasn't a green screen? It wasn't a green screen. It was like I hooked up my computer to the TV and then just like popped up all these like YouTube videos of just different uh, backgrounds and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Awesome. Did you edit that yourself then as well or? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Video creator. Yeah. It, 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 I... I kind of have, like, a checklist that I go through of, like, all the, like, qualities that line up between all the people I interview. I seem to have a consistent kind of trend of people that I like to interview. It's, like, musicians that also make their own videos and act is kind of, like, the trio of, like, people that get on this channel. Because there's, like, there's Joe Jazz, there's Cass, there's so many people. The list goes down, but, like, they all make their own videos. They all do. They're all, like, very prolific actors and, like... I always find out these details after the fact, so it's always interesting seeing where all the uh, kind of like things line up for me. Totally, and it's dope too because when you do that, man, it's like you don't have to rely on anyone else. You know, mm-hmm. it's like if you can mix your own music, make your own videos, then it's like it's all on you. It's a lot of work and a lot of pressure, but then it's you don't have to worry about anyone else. You can just do the work you want. Yeah, and I think. And, create your specific vision too which I find I have to sometimes let go of and get a little more collaborative because sometimes get too stuck on a vision like I'm like "Ah, yeah you know people have other ideas too awesome we're just gonna fly into our fourth question of the five W's which is our where and uh, I just gotta know just gotta know where was your favorite set you've ever acted on hmm this could go way back. This could be really recent. It, uh, 
No, yeah, maybe I'll go way back to when I was in grade seven and I did um, Percy Jackson in the Sea of Monsters. Mm -hmm. That was like probably my first experience being on like a really big set. Yeah, and it was filmed out in Lynn Valley, and um, it was just super fun. It was just like me and a bunch of other like little kids like running through the forest, acting out all these things. Yeah, and that that was super epic. Yeah. So you kind of got into acting before you got into music and anything else, or that was kind of like the first thing artistically? That Definitely. Did. Yeah, acting, I started pretty young, mm -hmm. like doing a bunch of Hot Wheels commercials and stuff like that. And then in high school, I kind of fell off, so I was like more focused on diving, and I had braces too, and I smoked <laughs> weed. And like, like, uh, but then after I, I stopped diving um, out of high school, and I was kind of like, shit, what am I going to do? And that's kind of how I found, like, acting and music. Mm -hmm. So is, is, are you going to, you think you'll bring back acting into the fold and kind of put that back in the spotlight? Or are you kind of more in, like, the music vein now, then? Um, I'd actually say acting's more of my focal point. I maybe don't uh, promote it so much on Instagram, yeah. which I think will change shortly. I, I recently did a... a film as a supporting lead which will be coming out in august so i'm really excited for that nice 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 um but yeah i, I for me acting is definitely kind of like something i'd want to make a career out of mm -hmm. but then just trying to get my music really good too so that if my acting career takes off it can like come with you know yeah and i think i think they go hand in hand so well uh through talking to like all of the other artists that are also actors, like uh, Sam Darko is uh, just was doing some acting in Riverdale. One of the guys I interviewed a, a couple months ago, and like it was really interesting to talk to him and how it'd be interesting to hear how you also interpret this, but like how you interpret being able to be a character and be an actor and portray yourself in different ways and through different characters and different voices, and how that like really transports and like carries over into music to really create super dynamic music that has a, a very like cohesive story and like multiple characters but all through one voice totally mm -hmm. yeah i i know sam darko too he's he's oh. really good <laughs> yeah small place then i no. guess i guess you also know eddie escobar too yes yep yeah yeah i went to high school with eddie we we didn't talk too much in high school but out after high school we kind of connected a little bit more what high school did you go to i went to mow it in Abbotsford. Ah, oh, crazy. Yeah. Nice. Small world, small world. Yeah, for real. Awesome. Cool. So we're just going to fly straight into our fifth and final question of the five W's, which is our why. So the why is usually kind of like the last kind of crescendo of the questions, the one that's kind of got a little bit the most kind of like meat to it, it like mentally. It, the, so it's like, why do you tell such honest stories throughout listening to quite pretty much all your music discography that you have out at the moment? It seems like the one trend that you like to have, at least through your kind of like mainstream music, is you like to be honest with people and you like to kind of portray things and really tell like realistic full stories. And it's like, where do you think that uh, comes from? Yeah, man, that's such a such such a good question, and that's so funny because I kind of wrote a song about that yesterday. So hopefully, I'll share that soon. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. So, I guess for me, like, I have like a deep belief that we all are the same. We're like part of the same universe we're made of the same bits and pieces and i'm just like a certain combination that creates sam and you're a certain combination that creates reese but we are a part of the same energy and the same material mm -hmm. and so there's actually no difference between you and i it's just we perceive it like that and so i think with being honest in my music it's like, because we all feel like 
certain emotions and turmoil inside of us, but we rarely ever so express it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like being honest with my personal experiences is to be able to hope someone else could connect to them and like, I don't know, not feel so distraught and alone. And also to show that like, we're all kind of just the same, you know, like we're like imperfect human beings. And, uh, and I think too, sometimes in like the music industry and specific, specifically with hip hop, not always, I think we're kind of move, moving away from this, yeah. but there does seem to be this like projection of like wanting to show off this amazing image of yourself, like a mm-hmm. bunch of like ladies and chains and cool cars and stuff. And I, I think that can like, I, I think it's unrealistic, not maybe not unrealistic, but like untruthful and kind of surface level. Yeah. And so maybe for someone else, they might not like f- fully relate to that or feel like they're not enough and like kind of like bring down their self-esteem. Mm-hmm. And so I guess just making music about some of the issues that I face in hopes that like someone else can relate to them and like help I don't know, build their way back up together through music and stuff like that. It's a it's a that's kind of like a tiny bit of the answer, but yeah, I mean that's I think it's a pretty cohesive and like I think it's an answer that everyone can kind of like relate to and appreciate to say. I mean, I know I appreciate listening and going through and seeing the honest stories come through and I'm like, I can relate to my own experiences from when you were talking about uh, the archives part one, I found those ones particularly uh, kind of like <laughs> yeah. interesting to listen to. Cause I was like, Oh, I was like, I cause like, I've gone through some similar things and I feel like a lot of people, if you listen to those, you will, you will probably also relate to them in some way and you can kind of see where you kind of connect with other people. And I, I guess that, putting your emotions out on the world like this really kind of helps everyone feel like they're part of that one big cohesive thing. And, and even not exactly. even for the sad things, not even for like being the honest, like brutal, like harsh truths, but even for like all of the fun times that you have and like on your more like, uh, like, like wine box and like the stuff with Yeti boys, like you share like the happy moments as well. And a very truthful, honest, and like by showing like the minute details that are, like super relatable to people and I think you the way you use to describe the world that you live in and each emotion that you have is like it really kind of like helps really bring an emotion when I listen to any one of your songs I can really kind of like feel the happiness or feel the sadness or feel kind of whatever emotion you're kind of like playing off and I feel I feel like you do a really great job with it and it makes listening to your stuff a lot more dynamic and not just be like this bangs this is hard It, it feels like an actual kind of like experience and I think that's uh, it's not something that not many people can do and I, I really applaud you for it oh that's so dope man I think you honestly just said that better than I did so thank <laughs> you <laughs> oh, my pleasure my pleasure yeah. awesome well thank you so much for sitting down with me Sam that has been the fifth and final question of the five W's uh is there anything else that you kind of have that you want to kind of s- shout out promote anything you want to reference you want to give the yeti boys a shout out i mean i'll i'll give the yeti boys a shout out go check out all the yeti boys that's a part of the that's the music group that sam's a part of they are honestly all really good super talented and doing a bunch of cool shit uh so they got their shout out from me uh anything else you want to kind of like say or kind of like leave with the audience as we're closing this out yeah man um we got a couple artists on the Yeti Boys who are like releasing some singles this summer. So check out Malloy as well. He's like a really good buddy of mine. We we're recording together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, I don't know if I'm allowed to like promote myself like this, but Go for it. I have my own like recording studio set up at home, and I offer mixing and mastering services. So for any artist that's kind of like wanting to get into it and like need a place to record. I know what that's like. So feel free to hit me up with the DM. And then and I'd say lastly, uh, I don't know. Thank you, Reese. 
Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, I do just have... Uh, thanks for everyone who's maybe listening right now. Yep. I just have one last question that I forgot just looking back at my notes. And uh, I got to know, uh, do you speak French? Because I myself I am a fluent French speaker and uh, you use it a few too many times for me to just think it's coincidence. Where do you see me? Where have I been using it? But we use it powerful. Okay, okay. Yeah, you use it in like... You use it in Instagram captions a lot, uh, mainly. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's almost like as a way to like low key hide, kind of say something, but like in yeah. different language, kind of nice. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, uh, yeah. I was like oh, that's cool. I, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing there. Well, that's tight. Well, thank you, <laughs> Sam the Seagull, so much for joining us uh, on the 5Ws interview show. It has been an absolute pleasure. I wish you the best of luck with your music acting career. Whatever you decide to do, I'm sure it will probably go pretty well because uh, you seem like a pretty dope, nice guy, and I can't imagine uh, anyone not wanting to work with you. So uh, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Everyone, go check out this guy's stuff on SoundCloud. Check it out on Spotify. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, check him out on IMDB if you know where that's at. And uh, uh, my name is Manrisi Setter. This has been Sam the Seagull, and we will see you. I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. Thanks, Reese.